It was the briefing uh, at, uh, that started at 1 p.m. by the Independent Electoral Commission, just basically giving us an update of where things stand on voting day in South Africa. Quick highlights. 3.5 million voters have already voted. Well, there was an hour ago. There was at, uh, well, about half an hour or so ago uh, when the briefing started. They were talking about 3.5 million people having voted. We are able to know this in this particular election cycle because the IEC is using a new voter management device, VMDs is what they call them. They replaced the old zip zip machines that uh, served you know, for a period of time with a mixed track record. So the IEC says now that they are using these machines, uh, they are able to tell us that we were at 3.5 million voters at 1 o'clock. And the IEC then also talking about that machine, they're saying it's holding up well. There have been issues that have been raised around ballot paper availability or otherwise in various areas, including areas in Johannesburg, the Western Cape and other parts of the country. The IEC insisting that that shouldn't be happening. They're saying that they printed enough uh, uh, voting district specific uh, ballot papers and those will be attended to. 20 voting districts in Guazulu Natal, including in the areas of Camperdown and Mdloti, not being able to open uh, at some point, but we are told they've since opened because of community protests, those delays. In the Eastern Cape, that number is 19. And uh, startlingly there, the IEC's chairperson, Glenn Machinini, talking about people digging trenches uh, in the Eastern Cape to ensure that basically there's no opening of those uh, sites. But the IEC is saying they are working with officials there and they were able to fill those trenches and try and open those sites. To the right of your screen, you are seeing there uh, the suspended ANC Secretary General, Ace Mahashule. He's casting his ballot. We'll keep those visuals on screen while we continue with the conversation. I'm joined now by Wayne Sussman uh, to take it forward and just uh, really unpack what we have heard here, Wayne. Wayne, there was a point that we, you and I wanted to start with, the issue of the weather. Uh, but I think it's been overtaken by these allegations of ballot stuffing. That's, that's pretty serious. Let's just take a step back. Every allegation of uh, voting station running out of papers, uh, ballot stuffing, communities showing upset uh, about uh, the voting station, not allowing the voting station to open on time, these are all serious matters. But I just want to take a step back and say, across the length and breadth of this country, in most voting stations, things are running relatively smoothly. Now that we've established that, we have to deal with these things. So when these problems emerge, such as ballot stuffing, it's very important that the IEC deals with it effectively. And I really hope that we have polling agents from different parties collaborating together and making sure that no one is going rogue and that our election will be free and fair everywhere. So we are at 3.5 million people having voted and, you know, thanks to these new machines, we're able to say that now. But we have no basis of comparison because the previous machines couldn't give you those statistics um, in, in a live update kind of format. But your sense, where is this taking us for voter turnout? And I know this is, is a bit unfair because you have no basis for comparison, but the day is perhaps what? Um, a quarter or so in terms of the voting day to 9 p.m. Um, how do you think? I'll be honest, it's a, it's, I love your hard questions. It's a very hard question to answer, but we know that with early voting, with special voting, 80% of people who had the opportunity to do special voting took up that challenge, and that's quite high. Um, because I know that some political parties uh, across the country were worried that the IEC would battle. So we know that people who uh, applied for the special vote, uh, most of them did take it up. Yeah. And what we also need to know is where, um, where are the, the majority of three and a half million people? Is it in the inner city? Is it in suburbs? Is it in rural areas? That's in order for me to give you a, it's, it's a, an, an educated picture. I'm sorry to disappoint no, you. Absolutely, I fully understand. And, and the number there in terms of the people who applied for special voting and actually took it up, there were 600,000 that applied and f over 500,000 actually took it up, which is really a good number. And the IEC passed the test, so we've got to give credit where credit's due. 
because people were concerned, will the IEC in this two-day period be able to register all the special votes? It's the highest number ever, and in most cases they passed with good flying colours. The weather, Wayne, um, very rarely do we make the weather front and centre of election coverage. It's always a bit incidental. You talk about a, uh, you know, a marquee that was being used being blown away by the wind but quickly restored. But it would seem it does feature in the equation in Limpopo. It delayed uh, opening in the area of Giani. There was a hailstorm, but also the weather is wreaking havoc in, in, the, in areas around Cape Town. Yeah, it's so hailstorms in Giani and pouring with rain right now in the city centre of in the city of Cape Town. Now this is important to understand. Because in 2019, we know that Guiani was rock-solid ANC territory. They got 74% of the vote there, one of their strongholds in Limpopo. The city of Cape Town, this is where the Democratic Alliance did best in 2016 from a metro perspective, got a whole ton of votes. Now, so let's just do a bit of math quickly. Let's assume that 100 people were going to vote in Cape Town and the DA was going to get 60 of those votes and the opposition 40 of, the, of those votes, 60%. And then we hear the argument that the heavy rain will favour the DA, that their supporters might be more motivated to vote. Let's say the turnout falls to 70 people instead of 100 people, and 66% of those people are going to vote for the DA now because they're more committed. That only gives you 45 votes. Earlier we spoke about 60 votes out of 100. Now we're speaking about 45 votes out of, um, out of 70 votes. Yeah. The challenge there is when we look at the... Na Remember, this is a local government election, so it actually doesn't matter on the local level. The DA might win more seats, but at the end of the day, when we... Um, analyze the elections after all the results are going to go in we're going to look at national figures and if the DA is not going to get its supporters out in Cape Town that's going to affect them nationally. Yeah and, and, and we all know about the political consequences that are likely to flow for all the various political parties Wayne. Wayne let's pause there for a moment as we tell our viewers about what you're seeing on your screen there is Ace Mahashule the suspended ANC Secretary General. He's casting his ballot there. He's in Paris. That's his home base in the Free State on the banks of the Val River, um, and he's casting his ballot there. One wonders if he will also uh, have a word or two uh, for the reporters who are gathered there to cover him voting. My goodness, have his political fortunes turned in the last year or so, with the ANC moving uh, quite decisively, really, uh, against him and insisting that he will be suspended, uh, precautionary suspension while he's undergoing those trials, uh, while facing those charges that he faces in the High Court uh, in Bloemfontein. So there he is. He has made his mark. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if we can safely assume that it was for... Uh, the party whose colors he's wearing, I think he's wearing an ANC T-shirt. It looks like an ANC T-shirt. Um, and, of course, you were hearing some of the commentary there that was being made about whether a voter is allowed to come clad in their um, uh, party colors as opposed to an official of the IEC, an observer uh, inside the polling station. He's done. He's dropped it in the ballot box and sanitized. We will see if we will get a word from Ace Mahashul. The big number that we're chasing, Wayne, in terms of voter turnout, in 2016 we were at 15 point, uh, almost 15.3 million people out of 26.3 uh, million registered voters. What's, what would be a good turnout for this election in general, but also in terms of issues of legitimacy of the governments to be elected, but also for the big political parties that do depend on a decisive turnout? This is absolutely vital. So remember, when it comes to national and provincial elections, the trajectory over the last few elections has been downward. But with local government elections, starting um, 2006, 2011 to 2016, it goes upward. We go from 48% of South Africans voting in 2006 to 58% in 2011. It's a game changer. South Africans understand the importance of, more and more South Africans understand the importance of local government elections, what it means to have uh, roads which function, light, sanitation, refuse collection, etc. So, will we continue that upward trajectory? I don't think so. We're in a pandemic era. This election was. Um, 
the timeline was much shorter than usual. The weather in Limpopo and the Western Cape might not be playing ball. I think it would be downward. What I do not want to see is below 50%. That would be a sad sign that more and more South Africans do not see value in voting. And that would be very worrying for me. Lastly, Wayne, uh, before I go to a break, um, how, sh how worried should we be about the conduct of the people that the IEC brings on board? Because, you know, these, a lot of these people who are foot soldiers, as it were, are not permanent IEC staff. They are on a short-term kind of engagement. And then you hear these allegations about uh, people trying to staff ballots, and it happens from time to time. The, the, for instance, when, when um, Sai Mamabolo was talking about the shortages, he says they shouldn't be happening. And he says, quote, these are acts of negligence. Um, and it's nothing short of negligence. It shouldn't be happening because someone would have made a decision. Let's not release all the ballot papers to the voting district. Let's release half. And then it creates that backlog, etc., etc. What does it do to the image of the IEC as a uh, well-functioning uh, you know, machinery? Training and preparation is absolutely critical. Allocating ballot boxes, so allocating ballots to a voting district. We know how many people voted in 2016. The fact that some voting stations are running out of ballots at half past nine, ten o'clock in the morning is inexcusable. However, again, in many parts of the country, it seems to be going smoothly. Uh, I do have concern that the IEC might not have been able to train people um, as well as they did previously because of the rushed elections, but let's hope that once the ballots are counted um, across the board, this will be a, a free and fair and properly run election. All right, stand by. We'll have more conversations with you. Wayne Sussman in studio with me, helping us interpret and make sense of what we are seeing as people are casting their ballots across the country. This is ENCA. I'm back with more rolling coverage uh, in just a moment.